I'm going to run some astronomy animations for the day of the eclipse. This is being done on an astronomy program called the sky. What I have on the screen right now is the way the sky is going to look on the center line just north of Nashville. This green line along the bottom represents the ground or the horizon at 20 degrees. So this is your field of view above the horizon. You can see how high the sun will be in the sky at first contact. This center line represents due south. The moon and the sun position are at first contact right now. This is 1158 in the morning just north of Nashville. Other planets in the sky at the time are Mercury, Mars, and Venus. These will not be visible during the partial phases, but they may be visible during totality. I'm going to let this animation run so you can see how the sun moves through the sky during the full three hours of the eclipse from first contact to fourth contact. I'm starting it now. It's 11.58 a.m. First contact just north of Nashville. I've stopped the animation at second contact, 1.26 p.m. I've stopped the animation at fourth contact, 2.53 p.m. I'm going to move the video back to Max Eclipse to look at the positions of Mercury, Mars, and Venus. I have the animation at Max Eclipse. If you look at the position of the planets in the sky during totality, when the sky is dark, we should be able to see Mercury, Mars, and perhaps Venus. Jupiter will be rising in the east, and there's a possibility that that will be visible. I'm going to let the animation run one more time, zoomed in on the sun with the sun locked. The time right now is just before first contact. This is at Max Eclipse. There is plenty of information on the internet that you can read about why total solar eclipses happen and why the shadow gets cast on Earth. But what I wanted to do is a simple demonstration with the astronomy program and the animations. This moon phase calendar is for August 2017 and you can see that the new moon is on August 21st so total solar eclipses always have to occur on a new moon because that is the only time that the moon could possibly be 
between the sun and the earth. The next month, the new moon is going to be on September 20th, but we're not going to have a total solar eclipse. The month before, the new moon was on the 23rd, but we did not have a total solar eclipse. So let's go back to the astronomy program and animate the new moons for July and September and see why we do not have a total solar eclipse. So let's look at the new moon for August of 2017, July of 2017, and September of 2017 and try to understand why the eclipse only happens in August. This is the position of the Sun and the Moon at 1158 a.m. on August 21st, the day of the eclipse. So let's change the date to the previous month. The new Moon is on the 23rd. So the month before, during the new Moon, the moon will be up in the sky, but you will not be able to see it because of the brightness of the sun. But you can see that the moon is going to miss the sun low the month before. Let's change the month to September. The new moon is on the 20th. Again, the new moon is up in the sky. You can't see it because of the brightness of the sun. In September, the moon is going to miss the sun high. Let's go back to August. So a total solar eclipse is really an amazing thing that the sun, the moon, and the earth are perfectly aligned that the moon will cast a shadow on the earth. So this is really an event that you need to witness. It's rare to have eclipses that have a shadow cast on the Earth, and it's extremely rare to have a beautiful eclipse cross the entire continent of the United States.